from Millville, New Jersey, and reaching around the world. New Life World Outreach Ministries presents His Word of Power with Pastor Richard F. Myers. Join us in a time of joyful worship, anointed ministry, and dynamic preaching from one of our Sunday morning worship services. It happens here on His Word of Power.
bass and drums. King of glory, have your glory. King of glory, have your glory. Let me hear you sing it out. King of glory, have your glory. King of glory, have your glory. Just lift him up. Lift up your hands and worship, because he is the king of glory. And he is worthy of our offerings, yeah. Oh, yeah. You are the king over the flood. You are the king over the flood. Worship you, Jesus. Have your glory today. Have your glory here and now. Oh, we worship you, Lord Jesus. Come on, lift him up. Jesus is worthy. Jesus is worthy. Oh, we worship you, oh, Lord Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Worthy of our offering. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was mine, but now. My 
chains are gone I've been set free My God, my Savior Has ransomed me And like a flood His mercy reigns Unending love Amazing Oh, twas grace that's all. Commitment. Love. Faithful.
Hallelujah. Let's get our Bibles open this morning to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Turn to somebody sitting around you and say, gee, it's good to be in church with you today. Hallelujah. Glory. Good morning. Hallelujah. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. We want to read there beginning at the, the 11th verse. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you today for your word. I thank you for the power of your word, the presence of your word. Father, it's not only the written word, but it's the word that's alive. It's the word that ministers and speaks to us in a powerful way. And so I thank you today, Father, that as we study your word, you will give us revelation, you will give us understanding that will be applicable to our lives in our daily walk with you. So I thank you today, Lord, that everything that you have for us, we will hear what the Spirit is saying. And I thank you for that in the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, we've learned over the last couple of weeks, in fact, we ended up here at this particular passage of Scripture, but we learned that these men and women who are given under this fivefold ministry category had the purpose of building our faith. And they build our faith through various ways. And what we learned was that faith comes by hearing, not by having heard, but comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And as we studied that, we began to realize something that as we hear, we hear, then we see the manifestations happen of what we're hearing, and it is imparted from our spirit man into our natural carnal mind. And so what happens, our, our natural carnal man. And so what happens is faith is something that has taken residence in us and lives in us because we're the temple of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is faith. And so we have faith living in us and all we've got to do is activate it. All we've got to do is allow it to work in our lives. And so what happens is we have to realize, and this is why the word of God says, faith cometh by hearing and not having heard, but hearing and hearing and hearing because faith has to be renewed, has to be restored and has to be reinvigorated every day of our lives. Because what happens to us is life throws all kinds of obstacles at us, throws all kinds of temptations at us, throws all kinds of junk at us, and that faith gets worn down and we need to have it restored. And that's why the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing. And you hear the word by preachers, you hear the word by tapes or, not tapes anymore, by... Uh, Downloads now, I guess you do. Uh, you hear it by you hear it by reading His Word, and I'm going to tell you something. There are times that as you read His Word, it speaks louder than a nagging wife. Amen. That's only for husbands, ladies. You, you it's not. I wasn't talking about you. <clears throat> <clears throat> So anyway, this faith that cometh by hearing has been assigned to this fivefold ministry group, the apostle, the prophet, the, the teacher, the evangelist, and the pastor. And so what we've learned so far is that the responsibility of the fivefold ministry is to do one thing, and that's to put faith in action for you so that it engages you into the things that God wants you to accomplish and become in your life. Can you say amen to that, please? 
And so what we want to understand something here is, and we've talked about this a little bit last week, that faith is not a, or the fivefold ministry is not a hierarchy of who's over who, but it's a job description of what each one of them have as a responsibility to accomplish. In fact, as you would study it or as we would look at it, you would find that the apostle's job is to help us and help the church press on towards the mark of the high calling. Most of his assignment is the care of the churches, Paul said. Paul said, I am an apostle of Christ and I press towards that mark. And that mark is that he cares for the churches. Then if you look next, it's the prophet there, and his is to engage vision in you. He's to confirm what God is speaking to you. He's there to encourage you and uplift you. Right behind him, you have the evangelist. His job assignment is to go out and win the lost and bring them into the house of God, where the pastor who is assigned the responsibility of helping you grow in the things of God. And then the teacher who is there in the fivefold ministry, they're there to help us understand what God's word is saying and how it works in our lives. You know, I can have the best gadget in the world. I can have the best car in the world. I can have the best iron to iron clothes in the world. But if I don't know how to use it, it's useless. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so what God has done here, he has given these five-fold ministry assignments to make sure that something gets accomplished. They all have exactly the same assignment. They all just have different responsibilities and ways to accomplish that assignment. And what is that assignment that every one of the five-fold ministry has? Listen to this. It's found in verse number 12. He gave, uh, verse number 11, he gave all the five-fold ministry, number 12, verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the perfecting of the saints everybody say perfecting of the saints say it out loud for the perfecting of the saints for a reason for the work of the ministry now I want us to get a hold of something I want us to realize what God is saying in that passage of scripture that it's the fivefold ministry's job for, for the perfection of the saints, but it's the saints' job to do the work of the ministry. You know, in so many churches around the nation and around the world, we all think that it's the pastor's job to do it all, or the fivefold ministry's job, or the hired staff. But that's not what that word says. It says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Somebody say, work of ministry. Work of ministry. Look at somebody and say, uh-oh. uh-oh. He's got our number now. See, it's for the work of the ministry that God has given us the five-fold ministry. So who's to do the work of the ministry? The saints. Not the pastor, not the prophet, not the pastor, not the teacher, not the evangelist. Their assignment is to set it up that we as the saints of God do the work of the ministry. And what does that mean? What does it mean to do the work of the ministry? Well, maybe you should come clean to church. Maybe you should work in the nursery. Maybe you could help in super church. Yeah, they're all good things. And they all are part of the work of the ministry. But the true bottom line work of the ministry is that you become a lighthouse and a vessel for other people to see Jesus. That's the work of the ministry. And that is accomplished by us doing that work in various ways. Number one, the way we live our lives, the testimonies that we have, the places that we interact with other people. They are all places where the work of the ministry happens, but it also happens in the church because people come to the church to receive what God's got for them. And if there's not people who are working in the church, there will not be a place for them to receive. 
So we have a twofold thing here that's working. It's working in God's house, but it's also working as a vessel to be what God wants us to be. Can we say amen to that? And I'm going to tell you something. This is just a little secret. Don't tell anybody else because then they're going to get blessed and you won't. So don't tell anybody this secret. If you want to be really blessed, everybody do like this so you can hear what I say. <laughs> you want to be really blessed by God? Volunteer. volunteer. Don't just come and sit in church. Volunteer. You know what? All these people who are singing up here today have volunteered. All these people who are on the television cameras, up in the sound room, up, up here, down at Super Church, all over this building, they volunteered and God opens a window of blessing for them like you can't believe. Can you please say amen? amen. And here's what's interesting about that. When you give your tithes, God says he'll bless you. But when you give above your tithes and you give your talents and you give your time to God, he exponentially multiplies that blessing that there'll be so much that you won't even be able to contain at all. Please say amen to that. And so if you really want to learn how to be blessed, volunteer, give your time, give your talents to God because they are all designed for the work of the ministry. So as I volunteer in the house of God, God will take care of me out here and out there. When I first came to the church, God spoke to us and he said, you build my house and I'll build your house. You build my house. Now, right away, most people are going to start thinking, oh, that's why you got this building. That's why you built those buildings. That's why you're building that building down there. Uh, 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 uh. Building the house of God is building you. You are the house of God. This is just the place that the house of God assembles on different days of the week to multiply our power and our anointing. You say, what are you talking about? In the midst of two or three of us, he's gathered in that. And so as we gather and celebrate Christ here on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday or whenever it happens to be, when, he do, when we do that, we are empowered and this power is multiplied. Because two or three or a hundred of us are gathered together in his name. And there he is right in the midst of it. Can you say amen, please? And so what happens is we all begin to do this thing where we volunteer our gifts, our talents. We don't just hoard them and sit, but we allow God to use us for whatever purposes he might have. I'm going to explain something to you. I'm standing here today as a pastor because Helen changed diapers in the nursery. Amen. Huh? Amen. Wait a minute. You're the pastor, but she changed the diapers in the nursery. Didn't you ever read scripture? The two have become one. So she did the diapers, I do the preaching. You say, that ain't right. It is for me. <laughs> ain't that right, Bill? <laughs> ain't that right, Devante? <laughs> yeah, you change diapers, don't you, Bo? <laughs> yeah. well, here's the deal. Obviously, the two of us have become one. Whatever she does and whatever I do, we're sharing in the laboring of that and the reception of that. But here's the key. We first volunteered and served in a nursery before we got to minister. Amen. You see, you don't just get to walk up on the platform with God. Well, people do it, but they don't do it with his anointing. Because God requires us steps of development. Please say amen. Every one of us who had a job or have a job, you had to learn how to do that job by somebody teaching you that. 
And that's what the fivefold ministry does. They teach us that for the work of the ministry. And they do it with a specific purpose in mind. And it's found in the verse, next verse, verse 13. We do the work of the ministry for the, uh, we perfect the saints for the work of the ministry for one purpose until we all look like Jesus. You know, when someone sees Ken out in the streets and he works for a company where when the people are working, he's in the truck or he's at the end of the truck and he's got the sign, right, that says stop and go. He's the guy that many of you have cursed at. <laughs> or at least shook your head out. Oh, he just turned it now. I was just getting ready to go through. Now I got to stop. You know what? They ought to be able to see Jesus in him at that stop sign as easily as they see Jesus me at that pulpit. Can you say amen, please? Amen. And so what the perfecting of the saints is for, the work of the ministry, is that we all look like Jesus. And the more we all look like Jesus, the more we're going to draw people to Jesus. Because he said, if you lift Jesus up, he'll draw all men unto you. And it's not my giftings, my talents. It's not your ability. It's not Ricky's ability to play that song on the sax this morning or Steve to jump up there. That's not not what it's about. It's about the image of Christ that you present to all of those that you come in contact with because we have put you in a place where you look like Jesus. And as you look like Jesus, you flow in the anointing that God has for you. And your anointing is not my anointing. You may work in a secular job all your life, you may never step into a pulpit to preach, but you shouldn't look any less like Jesus than all of those who do it. Somebody please say amen to that. And so what is happening here is God has set it up that the calling of the fivefold ministry is a calling to help you be perfected so you look like Jesus and so that his word works for you, his word works through you, his word works by you, and his word works as an example to others to see. Please say amen to that. And so we have the fivefold ministry all doing their part in various ways and methods, all having the same responsibility for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and yet there's something even higher. You know, so many times we go through these different waves. We're in a wave right now that every place you turn Somebody new is an apostle. How many know what I'm talking about? Now we got apostles over here, apostles over there, apostles over here. You know, and as I read and read the word of God, I see that Paul was designated as a chief example as an apostle. And he said this, he said, I have the cares of the churches. And I'm seeing apostles come forth. They have one church. And now all of a sudden they're the apostle, their wives are the prophets. And I'm wondering to myself, where did the perfect people go? Where are the people who just want to do the work of God? There's a scripture verse that Helen and I live by all of our lives since we started serving God fully. It said, receive a prophet, receive a prophet's reward. I don't need to tell you I'm an apostle. I don't need to tell you I'm a prophet or an evangelist or anything else. You'll know me by my fruits. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? When you see a person like Dr. Mike Pangio, who oversees hundreds and hundreds of churches and has the care of those churches on his life, you don't have to have him tell you he's an apostle. You know him by his fruits. Can you please say amen to that? You'll know him by his fruits. 
You'll know him by his fruit. You'll see what he's doing. And that's how God confers upon us our titles and our positions and our responsibilities, not by me just declaring that I am this or I am that. And I want you to understand something. The moment I declare that I hold a position in God's kingdom, whether he has called and anointed me or not, I put myself in a position to be attacked by the enemy at that level. So if I'm calling myself an apostle or a prophet or a teacher or whatever, that has given the enemy a legal right to attack me at that level of anointing. Here's the problem. When I'm not called by God to be in that position, and I've assumed that by basic teaching from some man someplace or something that I've deemed that I am, you don't have the anointing to cover you, and thus, when the battles come, you have nothing to fight back with. And you can look all over this world and all over this nation. 1,500 pastors are quitting, ministers are quitting the ministry a month right now. 1,500. Why? Because they named them something that God didn't call them to be. And the anointing wasn't there to sustain them. And when you see men like the pastors that are here, Ron McDonald and, and, and Frank Reeves and Steve and all the rest of them, and I'm not going to go through all the names, Pastor Tony, and When you see them, you see them and you can call them pastor. You know why? Because you've seen for year after year after year after year, even through their own battles, you've watched this lady come in here with her foster grants on, you know, looking like a movie star. She didn't feel like a movie star because her eyes were being affected. She was under an attack, but she was still here. Frank Reeves, when he's going through his stuff, Steve, when he goes through his stuff, I, when I go through my stuff, we're here. That's how you get to see the fruits of the calling on their lives. Somebody say amen. Amen. And when you see that on their lives, you can submit to them because you know they've been called by God, not taken up a vocation, but they've answered a calling from God and God will use them to minister to you. Somebody please say amen. And so you begin to see that. And when you see that, you feel safe. You feel comfortable. You see the anointing flowing. Every one of these men, Pastor Bill, He's been to hell and back with things that happened to him in his past, in the war. And he's still here, hanging on, fighting the good fight of faith. Somebody please say amen. Amen. Thank you for these men and women around the globe who fight. Churches are still holding services in Ukraine under the war, under the siege by the Russians. They're still holding services. Pastors are still bold enough not to run, but to stand fast for the glory of God. And you know what's happened? They've answered even a higher calling than the fivefold ministry. You say, what? No, the fivefold ministry, that's the callings. You know, that's, that's what God set up. He set up something higher than that. Let me read it to you. In fact, why don't you turn over there to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. I want you to see something. Because as we look at the fivefold ministry, we see one thing. We all have the same assignments to encourage you and to bring you into perfection so you can do the work of the ministry. But then God set something else that's even higher than that. And if you'll look there at 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, I want you to look there at the 15th verse with me. And it says these words, for though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, you have not many fathers. Though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have you not many fathers. Every one of the categories of the fivefold ministry are instructors in Christ. They instruct you in different ways and different purposes, but they all do it for the one purpose of bringing you 
into the perfect man in the image and reflection of Jesus Christ. But here it says, you have a lot of those, but you have not many fathers. So what's the difference? Paul said this. Paul said this in Philippians, the third chapter, don't turn there, the 14th verse. He says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. Hmm. I press towards the mark for the prize of the mark of the high calling of God. And what is God to us? Jesus is our Savior. Holy Spirit is minister to us. God is the Father. So you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Paul says, I press towards the prize of the high calling of God, the Father. I press towards the Father calling. Now I want you to know something. I press towards the mark of the calling of the Father. So that when you come here, you don't just come here to hear a pastor preach, but you come here because God has imparted unto us the spiritual responsibility of a father. Somebody please say amen. amen. You know, and with a father, man, it's something that you can't get. You just can't step into the fivefold calling of God and, and, and become a father automatically. You can't be a father until you have intimacy with the father. And when you have intimacy with the father, then the father transmits to you and infuses you with his heart and his mind and his love and his personality and his character and his nature. And then you begin to start oozing. You don't spew it out. It's not like a fountain that's just spewing. You just ooze it a little bit. You ooze it into this life. You ooze it into that life. You ooze it into this life. And it's that father care that loves you regardless of whatever you do or whatever you're going through. And it's an intimacy with the father himself. And whatever it is, it is never, ever based on the relationships or the example of some earthly father that you've experienced or I've experienced. It's a totally different experience with God. And you have to have that intimacy with him because without it, it can be perverted based on some experience that you've had or I've had with my earthly father. And I want you to understand something. No matter how good or how bad your earthly father was, we can never, ever, ever compare to how good the heavenly father is. We can never understand that. I spend hours a week, my wife will tell you, from early morning till, I don't even come into the church till one o'clock. And I spend time in intimacy because I don't want to be just a pastor. I want to be a father. And I want you to know something. It costs something to be a father. It costs something to be any of the fivefold ministries. But when you decide that you don't want to just be an instructor, you want to have an intimate experience with God. And you make that commitment. All hell breaks loose against you. But what's even worse, and I want you to really grasp this, the higher you go, the narrower the road. You know, when Jesus talks about wide is the way to hell, but narrow is the road to heaven, He's talking to you about something of great significance. He's talking to you about coming into a realm with God himself where all this stuff that everybody else deals with is of no interest to you any longer. Amen. You come to a place 
where all you care about is being the image of the heavenly father to touch the people that he calls his children. Somebody please say amen. There's many of you in here who have had terrible father examples. Some of you have had great father examples. Some of you have been through abuse. Some of you have been bruised. Some of you have been wounded and hurt. Some of you are carrying scars from years and years and years ago that were inflicted upon you intentionally or unintentionally by somebody who was called dad or a father. But the name was perverted because they weren't a father in actuality. See, because when a father becomes a father, he takes you into his heart and never lets you go. See, the heavenly father has taken you and 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 you into his heart. And he'll never, ever let you go. Hello. So when I look at this and I say, pressing towards the mark, past the instructors and into that place called father image that is not perverted based on what you've experienced. And I had a great childhood with a great father, but he doesn't even compare to what my heavenly father is like. And when that starts to get transferred to you, because you've purposed to be more like your heavenly father than you've ever imagined that you could be, he begins to bring you on this narrow walk that where everybody else can do this, you can't do that. And the higher you go, whether you're going to become a father or not, but the higher you go in intimacy with him, the more he will restrict that which you're able to be involved with whether it's the stuff you watch on television, the politics you get involved in at your job, or whatever other things that are going on around you. Your focus is what Paul said, I press towards that mark. And in that mark is where I want to find myself. Somebody say it. There's some of you sitting in here today, right now. It's the power of God knocks them down. Oh, thank you, sir. There's some of you in this building right now can't trust a man because of the earthly experience you've had. And so to submit to an earthly father is almost impossible. To submit to a spiritual father is even harder because all you've got is what's here and what you saw. And because of that, you can't submit. Some of you right now may be experiencing things in your family that cause you not to be able to trust. And the only way that you will be able to trust somebody, whether they're a pastor or a teacher or a prophet or a spiritual father, is to know that God has called them and anointed them. And that's why God talks about discerning of spirits. Don't call anybody anything unless your spirit bears witness with it. Hello? And then when it does, you are free and open to be able to engage at that level of authority. And it will not be based on your previous experience. And I want you to understand something. A spiritual father, that title has been ruined by cults. That title has been ruined by bad examples of the past. But it doesn't alleviate God's word. And God's word says, 
there are spiritual fathers and instructors. And here's the thing that I want to leave you with today. A spiritual father may correct you. He may discipline you. He may speak to you in terms that you're not particularly happy about. But the difference with a spiritual father than an earthly father, he does it with the love of God as his foundation. And so the only purpose, the only purpose that a true spiritual father or even a true spiritual five-fold minister is to perfect you for the work of the ministry so you look like Jesus. And when you find those kind of individuals who have that anointing and that calling and that intimacy with the heavenly father, you stay under them, you submit to them, and you hearken and watch how God uses them because they will bless you immeasurably. Bow your heads with me. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, open our eyes that we might see. That we might see the fullness of your kingdom and the way it really works. Not just the nice ways that we've been taught, not just from the Bible studies and the television programs, but God, let us see it based on individuals who have a relationship with you in an intimate kind. That God, their love for us is not based on their own needs, their own lusts, their own desires, but it's based on the foundation of the Father's love transmitted to them that they may be able to engage with sons and daughters of the king in a godly fashion. God, let us see. Let us be encouraged by those individuals. Let us see the possibility because in seeing that, the potential for us is motivated. And we begin to move in realms and ways that we've never been able to move before. So I thank you today, Father. I thank you that for every one of us who have sat in this building today and everyone who has watched this and is watching this through our television outreaches, our our social media streams, that God, they hear and they begin to look for spiritual fathers. For in the days and the hours ahead, it will not be the hirelings that will get us through it, but it will be the shepherds who have gained that intimacy with the Father. And so, Father, I thank you right now that we all hear what the Spirit is saying. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, this is Pastor Myers. I pray you enjoyed our broadcast today, and I wanted to let you know that our church family would love to have you join us here in our sanctuary for one of our weekly services. Every Sunday morning, we have dynamic worship, powerful preaching, an awesome children's church, and we see the power of God as he ministers to his family. Our Sunday services begin at 11 a.m. Then on Wednesday nights, we have ministries for the entire family. We have adult worship and Bible study. It's a night packed with the presence and power of God, and that happens at 7.15 every Wednesday night. For more information about New Life Church, you can go to our website at newlifeoutreach.org. There you'll find all the information you need to be part of our great church, and you'll see what God is doing in the lives of our families. 
until our family meets your family on our next broadcast. May God richly bless you and yours. Who is New Life Church and what do we do? New Life Church is a multiracial, multicultural church in Millville, New Jersey. There is supernatural ministry at all our services. And today you could walk out of here with a much lighter load if God would just give you something. This morning I had, I had uh, a gift that God uh, had just given someone and I didn't know who it was supposed to go to. In fact, there's no name on it or anything. And God said, don't worry, I'll show you. And today he showed us, here's a $150 gift certificate to ShopRite so you can go buy some food. Move it over, all over. You said for years you've been in pain. Come on, let's jump, dance, let's see what you can do. You can talk to right there, there it is. There it is, there it is, right there. Pain is going away. Just sit there because as you keep doing this, look, look what's happening there. How's the pain now? Yeah, what? You mean the pain's all gone? You don't need that. You don't need me either. You were just up here in agonizing pain. You were just up here with all those problems. And now, come on, walk with me. Come on, walk with me. Come on, walk with me. Turn around. That's amazing, isn't it? You're free. Come on back here. How's it feel now? Does it feel all good? Thank God he just healed you. New Life has works around the world through our partners and outreaches. Look, people want to accuse you. La gente te quiere acusar. People want to say things about La gente you. Quiere decir cosas de ti. People want to laugh at you. La gente se quiere reír de ti. And the only way you can stop them y hay una forma que tú les puedes parar. is show them the power of God in your life. Our mission outreaches reach around the world into 63 nations. From water well drilling to churches, Bible colleges, orphanages, elementary schools. New Life Church is constantly reaching around the world to share Jesus Christ. And New Life Church it there when disaster strikes. New Life staff also ministered at Ground Zero. Hurricanes Katrina, Sandy and Ima. We are helping with outreaches during the COVID pandemic. And our latest project, a leper hospital, clinic, home and church. I've been at the uh, uh, New Life Church. This is our church. New Life Church is an ever-growing, ever-reaching ministry that touches the entire family. We offer activities for men, women, kids and teens. We have programs to help the needy, outreaches to the community, and ministry for every member of the family. We take mission trips, trips to Israel, and join with our ministry partners to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Church life at New Life is full of activities, outreaches, dramas, and various ministries to meet the needs of the entire family. Our concerts, dramas, shows, and special presentations reach our community with the message of hope. Thousands have come to these special presentations to be uplifted, encouraged, and hear the Word of God. New Life Church is truly a place of fellowship and family. It's a church where families flourish for all cultures, races, and backgrounds. New Life Church, the church of many colors. Why not come visit us, perhaps even this Sunday?